So first of all, thank you for um, your time and uh, th thank you for this visit. Uh, I would like to start by asking you what, what is your vision for the Jewish agency for the future? You, I know that you're quite new in your job and uh, maybe you are still forming that vision, but tell us what you see now as the First future. First of all, the Jewish agency is celebrating this year 90 years to its existence. We were founded uh, under the resolution of the League of Nations, the organization that preceded the United Nations to lead, to create a Jewish agency that will implement the decision to form a national home for the Jewish people in the land of Palestine. That was the famous historical Balfour Resolution. And this, I always remember it. Every day when I go to work in Jerusalem, I sit in David Ben-Gurion's room for, from where he went to declare the State of Israel. We are the biggest Jewish organization in the world. We serve the entire Jewish people and their connectivity to the State of Israel. We serve all communities, including in Sweden. We bring immigrants, Olim, to Israel this year, 35,000 from 45 countries. We work on the connection between Jews to themselves and to the State of Israel. We bring 100,000 young people to Israel every year and we send out 4,000 emissaries to the communities every year. We deal with fighting anti-Semitism, and most importantly, protecting and defending Jewish communities, predominantly smaller communities. And we represent the entire Jewish people in the State of Israel. So it's a very big mission. And I'm already a year and a half on the job, and we are in the process of major change in focusing our message and our strategic goals. The Jewish Agency built 900 villages and towns in, in Israel. The Jewish Agency was the founder of El Al or whatever. We basically were the infrastructure for the state in being. And now we are the infrastructure that carries a lot of the weight of the entire Jewish global challenge on our shoulders. So that is what we are focusing on. How does uh, KNKM fit into your plans? So look, Karen Kayemet is a sister organization. I have huge respect for Karen Kayemet. It's a historical organization that was, the objective was to redeem the land, enable Jews to build their homeland on this land and maintain the green and the forestry and the, uh, and the uh, I would say, open spaces. Zone Israel, which is a small country, in a proper manner that will attend to the means of open uh, and uh, you know, ecological considerations, as well as develop the rural areas such as the Negev Desert. It's a huge challenge. It's a very big, respectable organization. It has an incredible history. So we work with Karen Kayemet on a multitude of issues. We have projects that the, the land is Karen Kayemet, and we develop the content. We have projects that develop young leadership and programs that enable Israeli youth of all echelons of society to develop their natural leadership roles and independence as young adults, which is a huge educational tool because we bring Jews from the diaspora and from Israel, Israeli people together. We attend together to the development of the non-Jewish communities in Israel, the Arab communities, the Druze communities, they need to have a multifaceted society that attends to all human beings as equals. So we carry together a major legacy with Karen Kayemet. So Karen Kayemet, Sweden, we are celebrating 110 years What this a year. history. What a history. It's fantastic. Fantastic. And um, we are building the Raoul Wallenberg uh, Park in the... Uh, Sora Forest, close to Jerusalem. Please comment. So first of all, you know, Tzorah is a special place. It's in the Bible. Samson dwelled between Tzorah and Eshtaol. It's all there. That valley, that mountain, that beautiful, uh, serene uh, area in Israel on the way to Jerusalem. And not only that, Kibbutz Tzorah is one of the nicest wineries in the country. 
So I'm a huge fan of that area, and I think it's gorgeous that Raoul Wallenberg, one of the greatest righteous human beings in world history, is commemorated there. I commend you, and I urge you supporters and viewers to contribute and be involved in this unique piece of land in the land of Israel. So our supporters in KNKM at Sweden are both Jews and Christians. I know. What, what, what message would you like to convey to our viewers? That there must be affinity and friendship between Jews and Christians to serve the needs of humanity, to fight for the just cause of the Jewish people, for their own nation and homeland, to combat racism and hate and xenophobia of all kinds, to understand that we live in a very complex world, whereby in our region we are at the frontier of where ruthlessness is. Because half an hour from my home, 700,000 Syrian innocent human beings were butchered by a cruel regime and a cruel organization such as ISIS, and the world stood idly by. And the world was hypocritical in its treatment of this crisis. And therefore, we have to understand that Israel serves a great noble cause of humanity, and people need to stand on the side of Israel in this cause. Uh, <clears throat> I know that you are friend with many politicians in, in Sweden. Yes, uh, from all parties concerned. Yes, and, and... And by the way, I recently met with Prime Minister Lopfven twice in his visit to Yad Vashem in the famous uh, ceremonies uh, marking 75 years to the liberation of the Auschwitz-Birkenau uh, camp and uh, we were very happy with this visit. Uh, there is no secret that the, the relations between Sweden and Israel has had some challenges uh, recently. True. Look, what, what, what do you think can improve the relations? First of all, I think Sweden is a very important country. And I th think Sweden has an impact on the world, both in the political sense and in the public sense. You know, Greta is, is, a, is a proud representative of Sweden, in a way impacting the world and teaching that young people can make change. It's incredible. And I think that as such, uh, I always remember Sweden's role in so many issues pertaining to Israel and the region. I know your political system quite well, and I've worked with politicians from both sides of the aisle. I think that Sweden needs to understand the Israeli position more, and Israeli needs to understand the Swedish position more. We live in different perceptions of life. Your country dwells in peace and serenity for quite some time. We live in a very, very troublesome region where you see some of the most disturbing phenomena. But as the leader of the Jewish agency, the biggest Jewish organization in the world, which attends to the needs of Jews all over the world, I can say we are extremely disturbed by the rise of anti-Semitism in Sweden. And I think that what we've seen in Malmo this year is a very big red alert. And I'm happy that your government will be hosting a, an international conference on the Holocaust Remembrance Alliance uh, towards the end of the year in Malmö to make a point. And I commend uh, that step. Uh, as Max said, uh, there are going to be a Ral Wallenberg Park in Israel. and. Recently, there have come some new information about the fate of Raul, Raul Wallenberg and, uh, and also the passivity uh, the, the, of the Swedish government. Can you so look, I, that's why I was commenting on world hypocrisy. Okay, you, it's very nice to be a commentator on the sideline of any conflict or any situation. I knew personally many, many Jews who fled to Sweden after the Holocaust. Sweden then opened its gate and was a refuge place, an asylum place. I think that the perception, when one, has to t when one tells us speak to Hamas, for example, and does not judge Hamas in the right, uh, I would say, uh, scale 
of what it is to be a terrorist that kills innocent human beings, then that whoever tells us speak to Hamas undermines, undermines the rule of law, civil liberties, democracy, and justice for all. Undermines. You cannot speak beautifully about uh, human values and then support Hamas. You can't. This is an organization that has sent 10,000 missiles on innocent Israelis. And unfortunately, at times, you have to take military steps to protect your people. And I clearly tell the Swedish people, there's a saying in our sources, judge thyself. First judge yourself before you, you judge others. That's the way I look at, at some of the voices I hear from Sweden. Nonetheless, I think there's a major effort to bring Sweden back to be a more honest broker, and I hope it will happen. I know your uh, government, prime minister, foreign minister for many years, and of course the opposition leaders, and I really, frankly, openly say the equation is tilting. I may add that the region is ch changing too. Some of our worst enemies are today our closest colleagues and allies. What do you tell them? that you still support Hamas, that you think you have to speak to Iran when that nation spreads hates and terror all over the world, day in, day out, taking bread from the mouth of their people and spending it on ammunition and on bombs and on terror all over the world. That's the scale that should be implemented on them. Uh we met the ambassador, me and another, the, one of the most famous artists in Sweden, uh, the other year, and he asked us, why couldn't you have a friendship concert in Sultan's Pool in, in Jerusalem and in Sweden? So now we are planning a big Jewish and Christian organization. That would be a fantastic event. So we do that in June 2021, because it's a non-political, non-religious, well, just that's friendship. really important. And we have uh, talked to Shalva Band. And, uh, can culture help to get uh, people the bridge, together? The bridge. Well, by c culture can serve as a bridge between nations. And part of it is just getting to know each other, bringing people to Israel to see for themselves, and learning. And actually, one can ask. And by the way, one can even criticize, of course. That's human deliberation. But first, be fair when you approach. And I think. Culture can go beyond the immediate conflicts and can go beyond the challenges, uh, political challenges. So yes, culture is the secret for success. I samband med att Karen Kajemet Israelfonden fyller år i år pågår en jubileumsinsamling för att inrätta en park i Israel till minne av den svenska diplomaten. En halvtimmes bilresa från Jerusalem i området Tzora utanför Bet ska parken anläggas för att hylla Raul Wallenbergs gärning i Budapest under andra världskrigets slutskede. Platsen ligger i ett populärt rekreationsområde dit många israeliska familjer reser på helgerna för att njuta av friluftsliv och natur. Det populära resmålet kommer nu att kombineras med en minnesplats till Raoul Wallenbergs ära. I mars träffade Max Federman personal från Keren Kajemets Jerusalemkontor för att planera anläggningen. Parken som ligger i centrala Israel mellan Jerusalem och Tel Aviv kommer att vara en påminnelse om en viktig länk mellan det judiska folket och Sveriges folk. Att hylla Raoul Wallenbergs gärning bidrar till en djupare vänskap och närmare relationer mellan vårt land och Israel. Mellanösterns enda demokrati. Insamlingen till Raoul Wallenberg parken kommer att pågå under hela jubileumsåret 2021. Den svenska diplomatens legendariska livsgärning har fått stor uppmärksamhet i Israel. Minnesplatser och vägar har uppkallats efter honom. Och den 26 november 1963 gav Yad Vashem honom hederstiteln Righteous Among the Nations. År 1987 blev Raoul Wallenberg hedersmedborgare i Israel. Många av dem som räddades av Raoul Wallenberg och deras efterkommande bor idag i Israel. En av dem är Thomas Fogel. Raoul Wallenberg is an angel. I believe this he is an angel, not a person. He's an angel. 
He saved us. Come from heaven to save us and uh, go back to 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 to, <laughs> to to the God. Yeah, that is that is my believing. Because I receive my life like like a present. That's it. <laughs>